I want to talk to you about fighting the fight of faith. You know, a lot of times people talk about fighting the devil, but the devil's already defeated. Jesus defeated the devil. How you fight the devil is not by screaming or imagining that you're, you know, some spiritual warrior. How you fight the devil is to stand in the victory that Jesus obtained for you. Now the devil doesn't want people to know that he's already been defeated. And so when you start to fight the devil, you're actually making void what Jesus already accomplished. The devil is defeated. You fight the devil by finding out what Jesus won for you and you stand in that. So for instance, Jesus won victory over sickness. Jesus won victory over poverty, okay? All of these things. The devil is a liar. The only weapon the devil has is deceit, lies, lying symptoms. What does that mean? If you believe in Jesus and you start to feel sick and you say, oh, I have this sickness or I'm gonna fight the devil about this. You see how that's not faith? But faith is how you fight the devil. What the believer has is a fight of faith. Okay, you're not trying to fight the devil to get your healing. Nah. What the believer has is a fight of faith. So the Bible tells us to hold up the shield of faith. When the devil throws his fiery darts, which the Bible talks about, they are lying symptoms, lies. Okay, when you accept those lies to be reality, you see how you could be defeated. That's how believers are defeated. Okay. But how you take your victory is to stand in the truth of what Jesus already did for you. Okay, so you hold up that shield of faith. You don't need to do some physical action of holding a shield. That's silly, okay? To hold up the shield of faith is to keep faith in what Jesus did for you, okay? And so by ignorance, a lot of people are defeated. As God said, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now. Holding the shield of faith is one part of it. Another part of it is using the sword of the spirit. Now, this doesn't mean swinging a sword around or imagining that you've got a sword in your hand. What this means is to say the truth. So if you're feeling sick symptoms or if you're feeling symptoms of sickness, what you do is you speak the truth. I am healed. I am the healed of Christ because you are and you refuse to yield to the devil's lying symptoms the bible calls them lying signs and wonders a lot of people buy into them and begin to label themselves according to the devil's lying signs and wonders but don't do that because that's crazy okay do not label yourself by the devil's lies label yourself by jesus's truths his truth is that you are healed reality suggests you're a failure and you're waiting for success to happen before you say i am a success reality suggests that you're sick and you're waiting for reality to say that you're well before you say it no okay don't wait for that speak truth and let reality adjust itself to truth jesus's truth is that if you believe nothing shall be impossible unto you say you have a son or a daughter and you take them to the doctors and they diagnose them with some condition and then you come home and you say my son has so so and so you're labeling your child with the devil's lying signs and wonders label yourself label those under you okay with jesus's truths say you have a son and you say he's a bad boy this is a bad boy you're labeling him with something that he's gonna have to become. It's a spiritual principle, okay? What you name things around you really matters. So name yourself positively. Name yourself in strength. Don't say I am weak. Don't say I am a coward. I can't do anything right. Even though your emotions may suggest these things, don't accept it. When people let the devil into their emotions, that's how they lose a lot of the fights in life. Refuse to label yourself by your emotions. Refuse to label yourself by your past results. Label yourself according to the word of God. 
you're more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. These are more than words when you believe them. This is the sword of the spirit when you believe it and you speak it. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. When you resist the devil by holding that shield of faith, which is to believe what God has already done for you, what the Bible says about you, and you speak the truths of these things, because faith has to be released, okay? You don't just keep it in, you need to speak it to release its power. When you hold your shield of faith and you speak these words of truth, you're standing against the devil and he has one option, he will flee from you. To flee from you means to run, as in terror. He's terrified, okay? He's not terrified by people screaming. You know, like if you're screaming and you're being theatrical, like devil, go, go. That's just childish, it's ridiculous. That's not what's gonna make the devil flee, okay? So read the Bible, find out the truths that God has said about you, stand in them, refuse to yield. Do not yield to the devil, don't give him an inch. Don't say, oh, I have a headache, I'm gonna, no. Always speak that truth, I am healed. I am the healed of Christ. Don't say I've been suffering, I need deliverance. You're a believer. You don't need deliverance from the devil. The only deliverance a believer needs is to be delivered from lies, from the lies of the devil. Because by those lies, people let oppression and manipulations into their lives. You don't need deliverance. You don't need healing. God is not withholding healing from you. Healing is not gonna come after you become good enough to get it from God. You are already healed. Jesus Christ already paid for your healing. The Bible says by his stripes, ye were healed. You need to stand in that and bring it into the present tense. I am healed. You don't need prayer. Pray for yourself. And the kind of prayer you're praying is not, oh Father, please heal me, because he's already done it. Your conversation is not with the Father. Your conversation is to proclaim, okay, to the forces against you, proclaim what God has already done for you. When Moses, you know Moses, the guy who led the children of Israel out of Egypt, okay? When Moses came to the Red Sea, he turned and began to pray to God. He said to the people, stand still and you will see the salvation of the Lord. And God said to Moses, Moses, why are you praying to me? Turn to the Red Sea, stretch forth your hand. Okay? God told Moses, address the problem. Why are you talking to me? I'm not the problem. This is not the time for prayer. Talk to the problem. And that's what you need to do. Okay? Say that you're a success. Say that you're courageous. Say that you're strong. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Okay? Believe in Jesus. If you're not a believer, what are you waiting for? It's the simplest thing. And it's the most important decision that you can make in life. Because after you leave earth, at the end of life, you don't get this opportunity again. All you need to do is say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Okay? So if you do that with me, I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart, God raised him from the dead. And that's it. It doesn't matter where you are, even if you're on your deathbed, it doesn't matter if these are the last words you ever speak in life and you never get a chance to do good works. Good works don't save, okay? So you simply you say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. If you do that, salvation is yours.